Hey everybody, it's Glenn, back in this video as my reviews of the Spider-Man Marvel Legends Absorbing Man Builder Figure Wave roll on with Jack O'Lantern. Jack O'Lantern is released under the banner Villains of the Night, sharing packaging with Morbius. And their bio reads, these nightmarish villains torment the innocent and fight to take down Spider-Man. Which is certainly true of Morbius, a classic Spidey foe since the early 70s. Yet the incarnation of Jack O'Lantern that we have here only popped up in 2011, and I'm not sure he's even faced Spider-Man. And in fact, if you're looking for play and display possibilities with the character, then he's most notably a significant nemesis of Agent Venom in the Venom comic book series. Also pictured on the packaging back on the left there is the Absorbing Man builder figure, and the action figures you will need to collect to build Absorbing Man are Ben Riley Spider-Man, Spider-Gwen, fellow villain of the night Morbius, Jack-O-Lantern as we have here, Venom, Beetle and Speed Demon. Here is Jack O'Lantern out of packaging. I recognise parts of him, the upper legs for instance, that date back to the Toy Biz era and Patriot from the 2006 Young Avengers box set. But more recently, under Hasbro, he shares more parts with Ghost from the San Diego Comic Con exclusive Thunderbolts box set of 2013. Taking a closer look and his slender proportions make a nice break from the typical super beefcakes we get in the line. Then above and beyond Ghost, he gets a belt of his own to contain his pumpkin bombs, and the creepy spindly body further accentuates that big bulbous head, which brings a creepiness of its own. I love it! It's been complained that the face sculpts of many legends have made them a glum bunch, yet Jack O'Lantern makes up for that with a really sinister smiling face embodying a lot of character. I like how the deco of the pumpkin is juxtaposed with the translucence of the flame parts. Curiously, the sculpt on top top features the circular indentation of a lid. Jack-o'-lanterns always worn this helmet, obviously styled after a Jack-o'-lantern, yet that detail takes that notion to a whole new level. Either that or for poor Jack, budget cuts means this is no longer a high-tech helmet styled after a pumpkin, and it's just an actual pumpkin. Now the comics have had a number of different individuals assume the Jack-o'-lantern identity, all with variations of the same weapons and tech. The third Jack-o'-lantern was officially known as Mad Jack, which we got a figure of from Toy Biz in their Spider-Man Classics line. I think back then in calling him Mad Jack, Marvel were attempting an edginess and were shy about giving in to the inherent goofiness of the Jack-o'-lantern legacy. And what I like about this new Jack-o'-lantern, both in the comic character and its figure is that it's unabashedly goofy. Before we move on to looking at Jack O'Lantern's accessories, let's take a moment to shine the light on Mad Jack, or not shine the light on Mad Jack as the case may be, as he features a light up head. Ooh, pretty. Now considering he was released back in 2006 and 10 years later, I'm frankly surprised that still works. For accessories, Jack-o'-lantern comes with this mean looking scythe, it's got a nice deco on it. In addition to that, he comes with a jet-powered broomstick. Yes, you heard me correct. A jet-powered broomstick. And in style, it very much reminds me of Brother Voodoo's staff accessory in that it has a brown wooden deco that's fading away into the translucence of the plastic here to look like flame. In theory, I like these weapons, yet in practice you have to wedge his hands into these parts so he can even hold them. It just looks a bit clumsy, lacking any kind of grace. Jack-o'-lantern, jack-o'-lantern, riding on a broom, jack-o'-lantern. I think he looks cool. Well, as cool as anybody wearing a pumpkin for a helmet riding a broomstick can look. But here is where he would have really benefited from one of those old style Toy Biz flight display stands, as once you have him on the broom, what are you going to do with him? You can't display him like that, unless you string him with fishing wire from the ceiling, I suppose. Meanwhile, Mad Jack came with a hover platform, more in the tradition of the Green Goblin. Plus, to its benefit, it does stand flat on the floor, so Mad Jack can be displayed riding it. Jack-o'-lantern's final accessory is a pumpkin bomb, and while hard to make out, it does bear the same Jack-o'-lantern expression as the head. And for a comparison, here's Mad Jack's pumpkin bomb accessory. What a whopper! Oh, that's what she said. It's bigger than Mad Jack's own head, but the size of it is to have given enough weight to allow for the launch action. Works well, huh? Not so much.
So after all that, it's left to Jack O'Lantern just to serenely balance his appropriately sized pumpkin bomb in his hand. Now looking at articulation in his big old pumpkin head rotates side to side, he is able to look down this much, but then looking up, not so much. Then at the shoulder, his arm rotates and this moves up. Hmm, only that much? Let's try the other one. That one moves up more. Maybe it's a partially frozen joint. I won't force it for now. There's upper arm rotation, followed by a double jointed elbow. Then the lower arm does rotate at this point here, but sadly there's no wrist hinge. It's a shame as I really like the sculpt of the hands with the sharp pointy fingers. And if it had wrist hinges you could further accentuate the dynamics of them with some posing. He has waist rotation and an ab crunch which moves this far forward and then articulates this far back. At the hips his legs move out to the side a real decent amount then you need to finagle the ball joint to move the leg forward and finagle it again to move it back. There's upper leg rotation followed by a double jointed knee. Now there's no lower leg rotation there and at the ankle the feet are hinged moving backwards and forwards but inhibited quite a lot by the sculpt there. Then of course it has that ankle rocker pivot that I love. And now taking advantage of that ankle pivot this is him standing at his widest stance possible still with both feet flat on the floor. Now a default of the spindly legs combined with the softness of the plastic he is made of means that the legs do tend to bow under the weight of the figure itself. And even in a vanilla pose and not an extreme one like this, his top heaviness does make him a bit tricky to get to stand up. So all things considered, and while I do love the head sculpt and I'm always the biggest fan of a goofy villain who takes complete pride in having no shame, yet he'll likely come across better in this video than he will actually in person. As in hand he's quite frustrating to strike a balance in posing and that prevents me from indulging in him as much as I would like. Anyway if you missed my previous review click the video on the left for Speed Demon and now to address a couple of questions asked in the comments of that video. Well Ultra Maximus alas they do not. But in better news, to answer Prophet 924s question, yes, the Silvermane head does fit on the chameleon body from the Rhino Bathwave. And I hope to see you next time. Mm, bye.